video, we're going to look at how to determine the empirical formula. So the empirical formula is the simplest integer ratio of atoms in a compound. Um, so if I'm looking at a formula and it's an empirical formula, like CaCl2 here, there's one Ca for every two Cl's. I can't simplify these subscripts any further than a one to two ratio. Um, sometimes the empirical formula is the actual ratio of atoms, and sometimes it's not. But we call the actual ratio of atoms in a molecule the molecular formula. So H2O, in a molecule of water, there are actually two H's and one O. So this does represent the molecular formula of H2O, because that's how many atoms of each type are actually there, but it's also an empirical formula because it's also the simplest whole number ratio that can possibly be there, two to one ratio. I can't simplify that any further. So you get down to the empirical formula. Once you get down to a formula that you cannot simplify these subscripts into whole numbers any further. So let's see, say we had a molecule that, like glucose, which contains six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. The molecular formula would look something like this, C6, H12O6. There are actually six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. So the number of atoms that are actually there are represented by the subscripts. But you'll notice a 6 to 12 to 6 ratio can actually be simplified. The simplified formula, also called the empirical formula, would be CH2O. If I were to divide all of these numbers by the greatest common denominator, in this case it would be 6. These numbers could all divide by 6, and 6 divided by 6 would give me 1. We don't have to write in a subscript of 1. 12 divided by 6 would give me 2, and 6 divided by 6 would give me 1. So essentially you're looking for the greatest common denominator between all of those subscripts and dividing by it to get the empirical formula. This, um, this particular molecule has a different molecular formula and empirical formula. As I said before, sometimes they might be the same if the empirical formula is how many atoms are actually there in, this, in the particular formula. Take a moment and try these examples. Write the empirical formula for each of the following compounds. Pause the video, then check your work. Okay, so C3H9, okay, um, three do, 9 does divide by 3. The greatest common denominator here would be 3. If I divide both of these numbers by 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And I get my empirical formula, my simplest whole number ratio is CH3. Remember, ones of subscripts, you don't have to write it. Okay, um, C4H12 can simplify. If I divide both of these numbers by 4, I get CH3. If maybe you didn't figure that this could, these could both divide by 4, maybe you first divide by 2 for each of these, and then you get C2H6, and then you're like, wait a minute, this could still simplify further, and then you would divide that by 2 and get CH3. So even if you don't pick the correct um, greatest common denominator at first, just check that you've gotten down to a formula you can no longer, no longer simplify, and then you've gotten to your empirical formula. C2H3, 2 and 3 don't divide into each other to give um, whole numbers, so this is the simplest whole number ratio. So the molecular formula is C2H3, so is the empirical, C2H3, I can't simplify this any further. 6, 8, 3, these numbers don't divide into each other, they can't just simplify any further, so this is also the empirical formula, C6, H8, O3. Okay, these numbers could all divide by 2, 2 is the greatest common denominator. 12 divided by 2 is 6, 14 divided by 2 is 7, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio between the atoms. Sometimes the molecular formula might be the same as the empirical formula. The molecular formula is how many atoms are actually in that compound. So the empirical formula, once you're able to find it, it gives us two pieces of information. On a really small scale, it gives us the atom ratio. So a molecule of H2O contains two H atoms and one O atom. It also gives us the mole ratio. For every one mole of H2O, there are two moles of H atoms and one mole of O atoms. So the ratios that these subscripts give me are either on an atom scale, okay, or a mole scale. 
these do not give us right away mass ratios. I can't say for every two grams of H there's one gram of O. That's not true. So if we're ever trying to find empirical formulas and problems, we always want to make sure that we essentially are going to end up moling information out. When in doubt, mole it out. Because this is representing a mole ratio and not a mass ratio. Okay, so the ratio of the number gives us the moles of each element in a compound. Um, these are given by subscripts. When given problems to find formulas, always convert to moles. When in doubt, mole it out. So let's look at an example and we'll walk through the steps. So here's a typical example you might see to find an empirical formula. So they give you the percent by mass of sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. So this compound contains sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. I don't know what the formula is, but I have the percent by masses for each element. Your first step is assume you have a 100 gram sample so that you can change the percents to grams. So we're really only dealing with ratios here, so it doesn't matter what initial mass you're going to assume. Assuming 100 would be easiest because if I assume I have a 100 gram sample, then 36.5 grams of it would be sodium, 25.4 grams would be sulfur, and 38.1 grams would be oxygen. So this just allows us to change the percents into masses, into grams. Why do I want to do this? Because if I have grams of each thing, I know how to turn that into moles using the molar mass. We've already done that as part of this chapter. Okay, so step two is convert the mass of each of these elements separately to moles. So you're going to have to use your periodic table, look up the atomic mass, which would just be the molar mass for those particular elements, and change these in from grams into moles. Why do we want to change into moles? Because the subscripts in the formula represent mole ratios, not mass ratios. So whenever I'm trying to find subscripts, I've got to mole it out. When in doubt, mole it out. So 36.5 grams of sodium. Okay, I want a conversion factor that has grams on the bottom, moles on top, and anytime I'm changing between grams and moles, I'm using the molar mass. If I look up sodium, it has an atomic mass of 23, so one mole of sodium weighs 23 grams. Remember that 23 should be next to the grams in your conversion factor, not next to the moles. For sul sulfur, I'm doing the same thing, except if I look up the atomic mass, it's 32.1, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So carrying out these calculations, here are the number of moles I get. Make sure you're keeping enough significant figures. So notice I have one, two, three significant figures to start with, so I'm rounding my answer to three significant figures. Most importantly, just don't just make sure you're not rounding and cutting off too many numbers um, because then when you finally get to subscripts, you're not going to get nice whole numbers. So make sure you keep enough digits. So if you were to get something like .007, Remember, that's only one significant figure, so you want to keep more than that um, after those leading zero, zeros. So just make sure you're retaining enough digits here. All right, so now we have moles. These are essentially the subscripts, okay? So I just made this note, make sure to keep enough significant figures, at least three. Leading zeros don't count. So once you have these, um, these numbers that I just found, these are the subscripts. There we found that there's 1.59 moles of sodium, so that would be like the subscript of sodium. 0.791 moles of sulfur, that would be the subscript of sulfur. 2.38 moles of oxygen, that would be the subscript of oxygen. But do these numbers look nice? No. Why? What are we used to seeing subscripts as? We want subscripts to represent whole number ratios, and these numbers are not whole numbers, these are decimals. So now we just have to work on changing these numbers into whole numbers. So the way to do that is, um, most often is, is I want to find which of these numbers is the smallest. Okay, 0 0.791 is the smallest. And I know that if I were to divide that by itself, I would get 1. So my goal would be to try to get one of these subscripts to be 1, perhaps, um, and finding what the other subscripts would be based on that. So all you're going to do, your next step, is to turn the number of moles into a whole number ratio by dividing each value by the smallest. So if my smallest is 0.791, let's divide all of these numbers by 0.791 and see what I'm left with. And hopefully when I do this, I'll be left with whole numbers. So let's see. 1.59 divided by 0.791 gives me 2. 0.791 divided by itself obviously gives me 1. I don't have to write that in. And 2.38 divided by 0.791 gives me 3. Now I'm in whole number ratios. I'm done. Here's my empirical formula. Na2 
S1, O3, it can't be simplified any further. It makes sense that this is the empirical formula. They should have all whole numbers. Okay, obviously if you're doing this step and you get something like 2.01, round it to 2. If you get something like 1.99, round it to 2. Okay, if you were to get something though like 2.5 instead when you were to divide these numbers, then I can't just round it. What do you think you could do if you got 2.5, 1, and 3? If you were to do that, you would just multiply all the numbers by 2 because then the 0.5 would cancel out. You 2.5 times 2 would give you 5, a whole number. Okay, and then you would get 2 and 6. So if you were to get a something right in the middle like 0.5, then do one extra step, multiply by 2. Otherwise, you should typically be done when you get to this step. There could be some exceptions where like you don't have to do this step. Um, your subscripts might be like 0.3 and 0.4, and then you could say, oh, that's a 3 to 4 ratio. Let me just get rid of the decimals. Um, but otherwise, this format should still really work. Okay, but if the ratios, again, are still not whole numbers, try to manipula manipulate them further to get to whole numbers. Okay, take a moment and try this example. Do the same steps that we just did. Okay, so my first step is to assume a 100 gram sample so that I can change these percents right into masses. If these are the percents by mass, okay, and there's a 100 gram sample, I would have 63 grams of mag uh, manganese and 37 grams of oxygen. Make sure you this is manganese and not magnesium. That might affect your atomic mass later. When in doubt, mole it out. I have grams. In order to get formulas, I need to be on mole ratios and not mass ratios. So now I have to mole these out and mull them out separately because they have different atomic masses. Okay, the atomic mass of man uh, manganese is 54.9. The atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So I'm dividing so that grams cancel out and I'm left with moles. Make sure to keep enough significant figures here. Keep at least three. Okay, so now I have my moles. These are essentially the subscripts. So my, my formula right now is MN 1.5, O 2.31. But I don't like these numbers. I need to get them into whole numbers in order to represent an empirical formula because we want the subscripts to be whole number ratios, whole number ratios of moles. So now we just have to manipulate these to get to whole numbers. We said do that by figuring out which number is the smallest and dividing them all by that number. So my smallest number is 1.15. So if I divide 1.15 by 1.15, I get 1. And 2.31 divided by 1.15 gives me 2. So here's my formula, MN1, O2. That's my empirical formula. This is manganese 4 oxide, if you remember the naming. Take a moment and try this example. Notice in this example I don't give you percents to start with. I give you masses to start with. So you're essentially just skipping step one, the assuming 100 grams, and you can go right into moling these things out. So you can solve problems that give you percent by masses by assuming 100 grams first and churning them into masses. Or you can solve problems that have mass amounts and just use the ones that are given. So in this case, Okay, I'm already in grams, I can skip step one. Okay, I can just take these masses of each and mull them out. When in doubt, mull it out. Remember, you have to be in moles in order to get your formula. Your formula represents the whole number ratio of moles. Make sure you keep enough digits here. These leading zeros don't count. I want to keep at least three significant figures. Here's one, two, three significant figures. These zeros don't count. Okay, so now I can get this into whole number ratios, okay? So I'm going to divide by the smaller number, 0.0119, and I get CE1I3. Questions with that? Well, I guess I can't answer them. <laughs> Take a moment, try this example, pause the video, give it a shot. Okay, tells you I have a compound iron oxide, so I know there's iron in it, I know there's oxygen in it, only two elements. And it's telling me that iron, um, it has 69.94% iron by mass, so I want to know the formula. Notice here I'm only giving you 1% by mass, but that's totally fine because I know that percents should add up to what value? I know percents should add up to 100. So if there's 69.94% iron, there must be 30.06% oxygen since there's only two elements in this formula. So don't forget, there might be 1% missing. You can only solve for it by subtracting from 100. 
Okay, so now I have grams of each. When in doubt, we mole it out. We'll change each of these grams into moles by dividing by this molar mass. Okay, we have to be in moles to find empirical formulas because empirical formulas are the smallest whole number ratio of moles. Keep enough significant figures here. I kept even more than three here. And now we can figure out the formula. These are essentially the subscripts, but we gotta get them into whole numbers. Let's divide by the smallest and see where that leaves us. Okay, we get Fe1, oh, and this is 1.5. It's like exactly between two numbers. So I don't wanna just round this to two, but I can get rid of that 0.5 by multiplying all the subscripts by two. So multiply this whole thing by two. One times two would give me two. 1.5 times two would give me three. And now I'm in whole numbers. This is my empirical formula, Fe2O3.